Ever wonder which Love Every Play Kit would be considered must-haves and which ones could be skipped? After about four and a half years of Love Every Play Kit ownership, here is how I'll rank every single play kit. Before I start, I want to say that the ranking is based on how I've seen my children interact with toys and one of the heavy factor is longevity of how long the items get used and the uniqueness as in how hard it is to find replacements. So I have five tiers, must have, A, B, C, and D. I rank these kits against each other, so a D play kit might still be good, but just doesn't have the wow factor. If a play kit here is ranked low, it doesn't mean that it's not worth the cost. If you've seen any of my review videos, pretty much every play kit value is there. You can also think of these ranking as more of a guide for those who might not want to subscribe for every kit, and I thought it would just be fun to make this video. Okay, let's get started with the 0 to 12 month play kits. First up is the Looker play kit. This is a tough one as I think it's a perfect play kit for introducing high contrast to babies, but the items overall don't last too long. This is probably due to the nature of these earlier play kits as they're tailored for specific age range. And with that said, I'll give this one a C tier ranking. Before I move on to the next kit, I want to point out that these are my rankings and no two children are the same. For example, my son really loved the silicone rattle from this kit and played with it for months, but on the other hand, my daughter didn't really think much about it. She barely even play with it after the first three months or so. Next up, the Charmer. Once again, great for the age, but nothing that completely wows beyond the play guide that's in all the play kits. I'll rank this a C tier as well. The sensor's biggest draws are the tissue box and the spinning rainbow. The tissue box is amazing and my children spent countless tummy time pulling those tissues. Probably one of the more memorable items when I think back to the 0 to 12 month boxes. For that, I'll rank it as B for being a very solid play kit. The Inspector is another solid play kit with a version of the famous Montessori Imbricuri box. But more importantly, it comes with the drip drop cups that my children use in bath time for years. They also provided so much fun during our backyard water play activities. I want to give this play kit a rank A due to the fond memories of the drip drop cups, but you can purchase these as a standalone from Target now, so it's not as hard to come by. So that drops the kit to just a solid B rank. And just in case you're wondering why I think so highly of these cups, it's just that they just work better than the other ones out there. We've owned several other brands of cups that serve similar purpose, but the Love Every Drip Drop cups are just better. The Explore is what I would consider the best play kit of the 0 to 12 month age range. These little grip canister sets are something I consider must haves. In the beginning, it might cause some frustration, but my children both ended up loving them and using them quite a bit. Later on, my children loved using the canister to store various objects they had. The clear tubes and stacking rings were another big hit with my family. We never received the current version of the Explorer, so not sure how fun the turn and tip is, but from the, what I see, it looks like it's pretty good. We own items similar to the bright and light play scars, and those still get played with now that my son is 4 years old. As you can probably guess, this will be the first play kit ranked in the must-have category. The last play kit of the 0 to 12 month old is the Thinker, another solid kit with many great items like the wooden peg drop, organic cotton doll, and sensory switchboard. I wouldn't consider the items quite as must-haves, but overall I still think it gets an A rank. The new organic cotton dolls aren't bad by any means, but the old Avery doll is something that my children still love. Both my son and daughter have taken a liking to the Avery doll much more compared to the new styles. I think if they kept the older doll design, this might have snuck into a must-have tier category. Okay, now on to the year one play kits. I feel these are going to get harder from now on to rank. Trust me, it takes quite a bit for me to not rank everything higher, but I'm trying my best when ranking them against each other. The Babbler includes the famous Ball Run, which my children still play with today, a four-year-old and a two-year-old. Not quite the same manner as a one-year-old would, but it shows the possibilities this has. All the other items in this kit were also quite a big hit from what I remember, at least with my son for sure. I haven't mentioned books before until now, but I would say that year one is when the books really get into another level. The stories are great and children love them due to the real images. The book, The Bedtime for Zoe, is perfect for this age range, especially when they start to fight that sleeping time at the end of the night. I'd have to rank this play kit as a must-have tier. The Adventurer play kit actually started out as a mixed bag for my children. Both didn't care for the race and chase ramp initially, but now both enjoy playing with it. My son especially loves racing cars now. The Threadable B kits was pretty difficult but overall a hit and something my 4 year old son still enjoys practicing. Probably my favorite item from this is the stackable wooden peg as it could be stacked fairly high and it didn't fall over easily. I can't believe it, but I'm going to have to go in and give this a must have ranking as well. 
The Realist Play Kit brings the Year One back down slightly. Not a bad kit by any means. The flashlight is great for small hands, and the brightness is perfect balance of being just bright enough, but not enough to hurt eyes if stared into. The lockbox is also another great item where children will spend endless time learning all the different types of locks. This kit goes in the B rank for being a solid play kit, but doesn't quite have the wow factors from the previous. The companion play kit, like the previous year ones, is another great play kit. The mosaic button board is another one of those items that lasts several years. I just rotated ours back in a couple weeks ago, and my two-year-old daughter has really been enjoying it still. As typical of anything animal related, the animal match another big hit. Plus, I don't truly think children outgrow animal figurines for quite some time. I'll rank this kit as an A. This brings us to the year 2 play kits. I know sometimes this is where parents usually start to drop off as children around this age start to have their own interests. But many of the items in the year 2, 3, and 4 play kits offer some great teaching opportunities. The helper play kit's biggest draw is the water play offered by the sink. It's almost universal that all children love water play, so this is bound to be a hit. But don't look down on the other items. The drop and match thought catcher is a great item, and one of my personal favorites are the routine cards. The cards let children easily visualize the routines they do throughout the day, as well as give them an idea on what's going to happen next. This play kit deserves an A rank. The enthusiast does come with one of the items I like quite a bit, the spray bottle and squeegee. The spray bottle is just the perfect amount of tension where it's not too hard for a child to press like most spray bottles in the market. The book My Favorite Nature Buddy was also well received by my son. However, I do feel that the rest of the items don't quite stand out enough, so I'll have to end up giving this a C rank. The Investigator Liquid Lab Kit is one of those items that gets more useful when used with some of the later kits, as well as the base which is great for all sort of water activities indoors to keep the water kind of contained. The countdown timer is great as the color makes it easier for your child to understand, and it's something that you don't really see on any other timer is that you get to set the volume of this timer when it goes off. Children usually love hammering things, so the match and tap hammer box is pretty much a win. Only downside is that it can get a bit loud with all that pounding. And once again, the Playdate book is great. I'll give this an A rank. The Free Spirit Play Kit's big item is the wooden counting box. This is something that children will use for at least a year or two as they learn to count. Other call-out items from this kit are the wooden camper and the two-part puzzle board. I give this a solid B. The first Year 3 Play Kit, The Observer, comes with three books. That alone makes this a great play kit, especially since these books all help teach various feelings. Some of the included books here are still my son's favorite to read till this day. We also use the Plan Ahead Weather Board quite a bit, not only to see what the weather is for the next day, but also to see if the next day is a school day or a home day. This helps quite a bit with the morning struggles if they look at the board the night before, as it mentally prepares them on what to expect when they wake up. The Modular Playhouse has also been a big hit with our family. The only item that I kind of have a little gripe about is the left and right stickers, and the only gripe I have with is that they didn't come with enough, because we know children outgrow their shoes fairly fast. I really wish they included a couple more sets. But I still think this play kit deserves the must-have rank due to so many useful items that are included that will last beyond a year. The Storyteller with its modular fort and puppet theater does offer quite a bit of fun, but the item that gets used the most in this play kit is the squeeze and spray mop. I don't think there's anything else in the market like it that's made for toddlers. While these two items are great, I don't think it's quite enough to make it a must-have category, but definitely in the A rank. The Problem Solver Play Kit is probably up there with some of my favorite play kits. The Montessori math bars and number tiles are done in a way where it's fun for a child to learn to count. These will last a long time as they can not only be used to learn counting, but also math like addition and subtraction. I always look for games to play with my children, and the Turtle Hatch game is a great early game. It's not a player versus player game, but rather a team game where everyone works together to save the turtles. And right in a theme with water play, the Liquid Color Lab offers a ton of fun and teaches color combination as well. I put this kit in the must-have category for sure. The last Year 3 play kit, the Analyst, is probably the weakest of the group. All the items in the play kit isn't bad by any means, but not as memorable when compared to the others. I'd have to give this a category C. The last play kit from Love Every, the Year 4 ones. Honestly, I was a bit surprised to see these, as at 4 years old, children really start to develop their own interests. It gets really tough to find universal toys and activities that will work for all. However, Love Ever has somehow seemed to have done it by making the play kids not only fun, but also help teach and guide our children. 
The connector includes one item we use fairly regularly since introduced, the Inventor Adventure Pack. It's the perfect size for a child to bring along items they want with them, while also providing activities on the pack itself for children to play with. The Daily Helper Board is great at learning to build routines and see which ones require help or those that can be accomplished by themselves. Overall, a very good kit, but nothing I consider must-have, so I rank this a B. The Examiner continues the theme of planning with the Plan Ahead Board. This is one of my son's favorite as he loves to know what he's going to do in the week ahead of time. Before introducing this, he would constantly ask what are we going to be doing tomorrow and then when I tell him, he'd be like, what are we going to be doing after that? And as you can probably guess, he doesn't always remember every activity when I tell him, but when he sees them on the board, the visualization helps him. My son has been learning a lot of different words at Montessori school, so the rhyming rings came at a great time for him. The appropriate game book has really been great. Teaching what is appropriate has been a hard concept and this book helps quite a bit. I give this play kit an overall A rank. Okay, these next two play kits, I haven't fully introduced all the items to my son yet as he's only four and a half right now, but I'll rank them based on my impression. The Persister looks to be a great kit if your child is in the stage of learning words. Three of the activities in this play kit revolve around letters and sounds. While of course, none of this is really needed to teach your child how to read, anything that makes the job easier on both the child and parent though is a plus. Speaking of easier, I really like the idea behind the calming circle. Children around this age have big feelings as they don't always know how to express what they're feeling. So something like this should help them calm down so that they can eventually express what's bothering them. The path building marble maze looks to be a fun activity for your child to do. And from my impression so far, I probably give this an A rank with the possibility to move up to must have depending on how much of the quality of life is enhanced from the alphabet toys. The last play kid love every offers is the planner. Clocks for kids aren't anything new, nor is the color coding, but it adds a mini clock that matches for children to learn how to tell time. The wooden ball ramp and subsidizing dominoes both look like fun activities that teach at the same time, but the one thing that I'm really excited about is the rover route. This is a pre-coding game, and it looks to be a great way to start coding concepts without the use of a computer or other electronics. I've tried introducing the concept previously to my son with a robotic guided one, and he hasn't quite grasped the concept as the robot itself seems to be too much fun and slightly distracting. This could be the key remedying that. Since I haven't actually seen my son interact with any of these items, I won't put this in the must-have quite yet. Similar to the previous kit, I'll put it in A rank for now. So there we have it, the final look at how I ranked every Love Every Play Kit. While I did make a D category, somehow it just didn't feel like any of the play kits were quite low as a D rank. Let me know down below in the comment section if you agree with my rankings or how you would rank them differently. If you've enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up and until next time, keep parenting the awesome way.